What's up guys? <clears throat> so I just woke up. Um, I made a, a quick video yesterday about the full moon, but I was kind of rushing, you know, 90 seconds is the maximum for the reel. So I had to get that done and I left out so much that my caption ended up being way better than the video. So let's just talk about this relaxed fashion. I'll have both videos, one for the people that want it fast, one for the people that want it slow. Anyways, this full moon is effing crazy. Um, you guys know I don't really come out and say say that very often about something. I'm not a sensationalist, right? That will say something like that for clicks. But look, in a full moon, you have to look at the chart of the full moon, right? So at the moment, just like a natal chart, there's an exact moment when the full moon occurs. At that moment, a new chart is created and you analyze that chart. So in that chart, there's two T-squares, right? So a T-square is, you know, when three planets are in squares, 90 degrees angles to each other, 90 degree, or it's not, it doesn't have to be exactly 90. So it could be like, you know, one, for example, you have Mars and Jupiter that are together in uh, Gemini, square, um, square the, uh, what's it called? Venus in Virgo, and then also square on the other side, Jupiter, uh, or Saturn, excuse me, in Pisces. So that's four planets in one T-square, in one, in one right? Because Mars and Jupiter are conjunct at the apex. Um, or at the apex is, yeah. And the other one has Uranus at the apex, right? So, and, it has obviously sun opposite moon, that's what a full moon is. But the sun in Leo is with Mercury retrograde, conjunct, right, a, a degree away. And so it's it's 28, it's 27 the sun, so it's very, yeah, it's, it's close to, to fixed star regulus. Um, but yeah, and then opposite the moon, and then both the sun and the moon are opposite, or are square, excuse me. Um, Uranus, the planet that rules Aquarius, that rules the moon, the full moon. And it's Uranus is on demon star Algol. So if we remember, um, was it a month, month and a half ago? It was in July, I think, when we had Mars and Uranus both on Algol conjunct. And it was a crazy day. I remember it was the final of the Copa America and like it was just insane the energy that day i think i got my phone stolen that day yeah, i did um just such a violent energy um hostile i remember at the game it was in miami and they postponed it for three hours mika mika <laughs> they postponed it for like three or four hours for so many hours because like fans were going like super crazy like trying to break in without tickets, all this stuff. So when I take the totality of all that for a full moon, I'm just like, okay, give yourself a break, you know? <laughs> Cause when you don't know about something like this, like for me yesterday, I was like, it was a very hard day. But when I really like looked into the full moon, I was like, okay, it makes complete sense. Number one, don't trust what's in here, right? Um, and I often find that it's, for me, it's two days before the full moon that's the worst, right? It's like once I, once I pass this test, it tends to get better. I know that's, it's different for everyone, but a lot of people feel the same way. But um, it is this buildup. So with Jupiter square Saturn, you know, um, and we don't, we have every planet as a part of this full moon besides Neptune and Pluto. Those are the only two, and then Chiron. Those are the only two or th two or three that are not being aspected, being brought into this. So you, everyone, it's like a, a, a fight that everyone's a part of pretty much, right? And um, even though there's no Neptune, there's a very, it's almost a very Neptunian confusing effect that it's having. It can make us really think like certain things about our life, like our progress, who we are, our future, right? We can get really excited with Mercury retrograde and then the square, you know, with, with Saturn and Jupiter, like like really feeling it held back when it comes to our expansion, right? 
like Jupiter is the whole point of Jupiter, or I'm not going to get the whole point of Jupiter, but Jupiter is, is very much about perspective, right? It's like, it's like you, you, can, you can be on top of that mountain and see your whole life. Even if you're going through a tough time, you understand like, yeah, okay, this is tough, but I'm still going to make it. So you have a lot of these destructive energies um, and, and, and sort of confusing energies. And Venus, a part of that, T, that other T-square in Virgo, you know, it's a very perfectionist. It's, it's, it's really kind of making us question ourselves like, am I good enough right now? Like, am I, am I where I'm supposed to be in my life? So I really think that's one big point I want to nail home is that it, will, it could bring up a lot of thoughts also about love life stuff, right? Uh, Venus, um, finances, um, how we look, how, 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 but really like on a more psychological, energetic level, I think it's more, you know, along the lines and it's different for everyone. Like, where am I, where, where am I supposed to be right now? You know, what, how am I valued? Right. Am I doing what I'm, am, am I, and, and, and just being a very harsh critic. So that's one thing that you have to know. Another, just based on the energy of Uranus and ruling the moon. So the moon in Aquarius is interesting because it's it's probably, if not the mo uh, most aloof kind of, I don't want to say least emotional. I know Aquarius moons who are, who are emotional, but it's a controlled emotional energy. So it may not, like there, there could definitely be um, potential for some intellectualization of emotions. Um, Especially, but then, you know, with Mercury retrograde and square Uranus, there can be, it can be quite confusing, right? It can be quite confusing. So, um, you know, Uranus is about breaking free. It's about, you know, finding your individual self. And if you really just looked at Leo Aquarius, that axis, a lot of that is, a, is around, is around that too. So it could be another theme of like, what, in what ways am I not being myself? And, my, and how am I holding myself back? Like, how am I trying to be, you know, cool with the others or whatever that's at the expense of me and my, and me, um, you know, being like my authentic self? Because only through your authentic self can you f truly figure out what you love and who you are, right? If you're trying to please people, your parents, society, whatever. You know, it, it just doesn't. It, it's just not good, right? It's like we, you you just become like a, a robot essentially. So I think also watching out for accidents, right? Because of the algal influence and um, you know the the idea of impulsivity and getting too far ahead of yourself emotionally, right? Is is a big one. I think that one of the big things I could say is that T squares are like bone arrows, right? So. You know, you have, it's like this, one planet, planet, pl apex planet, other planet, right? So you have two of them that are like right next to each other, you know? So the apex of one is Uranus, right? Because, um, you know, you have sun, moon, Uranus. So it shoots out into an imaginary point, which is around 26 Scorpio. So basically for that one, the resolution point is like life throws, and I wrote this all in the caption of my other post, life throws these very random things at us sometimes, you know, and you do your best to align yourself with good, good energy, good, 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 whatever, right? Um, to do your best, but sometimes you have to let go. And that's what Scorpio is because sometimes we think that something bad is happening when it's actually something that's pushing us towards growth. Um, I see it all the time, right? So it's important to know that, you know, you have, you have to let go sometimes in, in order for the, for the, for the greatest growth to come through. And also you have to be willing to go into your deeper emotions, into your, into your depths, right? Which is what Scorpio is. Um, and yeah, because like with Uranus moon, yeah, with all those, those, those energies, those fixed energies, um, it could kind of give us a fixed mindset. You know what I mean? Like you think about Leo and Aquarius is like, so uh, people, they get this rep of being a lot more fun. I mean, they, they, they're, they're very fun sometimes, but I know so many double Aquariuses, sun and moon who are the most boring people and <laughs> some in my own family and I love them, but like, you know, like it's, it's very interesting. And same with, same with like a lot of Leo energy. You would, you would think like, damn, no, like I know one, one of the most like hard 
knows business people ever has like everything in Leo. It's really interesting. So having flexibility is, 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 is a key here, right? And using the Aquarius moon to be able to see different perspectives and, 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 and also with a year in a square, it's like, it could make one want to be too rebellious, you know, make one want to, but like, also I really think, and I hope not, but like, I think that like this, this one speaks to a lot of global, oh, here's Esme, a lot of global things, right? Or issues, right? Esme, she just wants to be here for it. So, um, you know, Jupiter, Saturn, it's, you know, it, it's really kind of like, I'm not going to get into that. That'd be a different video about how that affects the, how, you know, what that says about like, um, you know, well, essentially just think about like what Saturn Pisces is and then think about Jupiter in uh, Gemini, the expansion of curiosity. Um, it's, 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 I'm not gonna get into it all now. But then the other resolution point is Sagittarius because you have Gemini and Mars together, right? Jupiter and Mars, excuse me, in Gemini. So that, you know, those two together are very, very good. That's a very strong part. That gives a lot of willpower, right? Um, a lot of curiosity, a lot of willpower, a lot of ability to um, use your words. But the issue, another thing with this full moon is that with the squares to, um, you know, to Venus, I really think that like a lot, like of, like any arguments can really get to the self-esteem and, and, and self-worth of people. So like, it's important to be very mindful of your words, especially, and I think Mercury Retrograde really does help. That's in a sense, right? Because it does kind of make us more internal and but so there's going to be a lot of like inner thinking and I, I think that the mercury retrograde might even be helpful to this full moon in that sense anyways back to what i was saying so with the squares from venus and then from saturn um it can really make us feel like you know we're trying to move forward and we're getting pushed back um and then we also like i was saying before like we don't we, like like kind of running in circles and the the point of sagittarius right which is like around like what like 19 or it's around, around my moon, great. Um, my spine moon is 21, 21 Sag, but yeah, so it's, it should be, I think it's around like 19 or 18, um, what will be Sag. Yeah, so that is um, very much about how you can learn, allow um, higher perspective um, and just basically, knowing, for example, if you're tripping about something in your head, right? Like Sagittarius is like, is, is being able to have like, know, okay, like I've learned these lessons before. I know that this, you know, what I'm going through, this is the astrology and it is what it is, right? Like it is, it is what it is to, in, in the sense that I, um, you know, it's like, I'm not going to put too much weight into it. Like one of my friends is commenting saying like, like taking on the stance of more of the observer, right? So you're like, things are going on around you, but instead of like, like you, it's your choice if you want to participate in them, right? Someone starts arguing with you, for example, or starts talking shit. Like it's your choice. Obviously if you're, you know, it depends on the situation, but in, in a lot of situations, it's your choice if you want to, want to engage in, in that, right? So always keep that big perspective that like what you're going, like trying to imagine yourself on the mountaintop if you can't go there, right? Like knowing, okay, like, yes, I'm going through this, but um, it's not necessarily based on reality. You know, this is just a, a weird energy because I was having all kinds of weird thoughts yesterday and I think if I would have seen this video or seen someone like give me this message, I would have been like, oh yeah, like I'm just tripping about stuff, you know, like I'm just, I'm just overthinking or I'm, I'm just, I'm just thinking from like a very negative place and next week it's not going to feel like this, you know? So anyways, that's about it. I hope you guys like the small and the long version of this, um, and my robe, <laughs> I just want to make this right when I woke up. I felt better. Well, I, my body hurt like shit when I woke up today. But anyways, guys, um, but let me know what you guys think in the comments, how you guys are experiencing this. Here's Esme again. Such a camera lover. Good job, Esme. You said nothing. Esme, what do you think? She's quiet after she eats. But yeah, if anyone wants to book a reading, um, I can have a live reading 
this week, like even two slots open. And then for recorder rings, I, it's only like a very short wait. So let me know. Talk to you guys later.